Okay, so now that we've worked out the height of uh, tide, we're now gonna work out the set and drift of tide. And this one um, is a little bit more complex, but not too much, and we're gonna walk, walk through it together. So we'll, we'll go at a pace where hopefully it makes sense. Um, and uh, yeah, so now we're working out the set and the drift of the tides. We're also talking about the, the flow of the tide. So how the tide comes into an area can also affect the trajectory of the vessel, the boat that we're sailing on, um, and that comes back to um, when we do our courses to steer. So when we're trying to work out our compass course to steer, we also need to know what the set and the drift of the tide is to make sure that we're accurately drawing those onto the chart. Tidal Almanac looks a little bit, or in fact it looks exactly like this. This is the Tidal Almanac. Generally 13 pages of exactly how the tide would come in and out of an area. So I don't know if you can see this very clearly from there, but what we have here are the arrows showing us the exact direction of the tide. And also on those arrows we can see quite clearly the uh, speed of the tide. So that terminology we use is called the set, as in the direction of the tide, and also the drift, which is the speed of the tide. So I would take this and I would measure the angle of the tide, spin the little wheel to the top, and that would give me the direction of the tide at the hour that I wanted to go sailing. Um, and depending where you are in the world, these can be really, really accurate. There are some charts also that will have tidal diamonds. Um, usually that information on the tidal diamonds on the charts are very similar, if not exactly the same, to the, to the arrows that you would find in the book. And the way that this book works is, usually this book is 13 pages, you would have your high water. So in the middle of the book, you would have your high water, um, which would be based on one particular standard port. So one port from which all of the tidal data is taken from. Um, so when you are checking your tides, make sure you always come back to that, that port. For this particular type of training almanac, it's a port called Victoria. It just happens to be the name of that port. You would have six hours before the high water. So one hour before high water, two hours before, three hours before, so on and so on. And then of course, six hours after high water. Now the real trick to this is working out exactly which hour we fall into. And that's the bit that needs a little bit of um, working out and some ba basic mathematics. So let's take today as an example. At the moment we are at 10.15 in the morning. Let's say, for example, we wanted to go sailing at 10.30. So I'm just gonna write that down. What we first need to do is work out what time the high water is, or is going to be, or was maybe even perhaps, at the, the high water at the standard port from which all of these tides are calculated. So remembering that this port is called Victoria, I'm now gonna leaf through this book until I find Victoria, the tide, or sorry, the port of Victoria, and I'm gonna look at today's date, which is the 5th of September, and I'm gonna look at today's date, 5th of September, which is down here, and I'm going to see that the time of high water, the closest high water to the time right now, 10.15 in the morning, is 08.54. I'm just gonna write that down, 08.54. That would be our time of high water. Now, this is Jamie's top tip for working this out. Use a whole piece of paper. What you want to do, and of course, if you have a, a whiteboard, um, that, that would be preferable. Write the high water in big letters in the middle of the page, so that's 0854. Now, bearing in mind that that high water is a full hour, but it starts 30 minutes before 854, so coming up to the high water, and ends 30 minutes after the high water, so after 8.54 in the morning. I hope that makes sense. If we come back to our bell curve that we talked about in a previous video, that high water there comprises of 30 minutes either side. So this is how I do it. I draw two little arrows like this and I take 08.54 and minus 30 minutes. So then I, that minus 30 minutes turns into, my maths isn't great, but I think I can work that out. That would be 08.54, ooh, I hope I've got this right, 24 and this would be 0924. Now simply, all we do from there on in is we add an hour to each of these. So that 0924 would turn into 1024, this would turn into 1124, this would turn into 1224, 1324, so on and so on for six hours. Each of these 
would be your hour plus one, your hour plus two, your hour plus three, your hour plus four, and so on and so on, all the way up to six hours. Equally, retrospectively, you could, if we were leaving earlier than 10 o'clock, say before the high water happened at 8.54 uh, this morning, we could go 07.24, 06.24, 07.24, 07.24, 07.24, 07.24, 07.24, 07.24, 07.24, 07.24, 07.24, 07.24, 07.24, 07.24, 07.24, 07.24, 07.24, 07.24, 07.24, 07.24